Yo, it's the Sports Drank Show. Today we're breaking down Coach Prime's post-game comments on Colorado's embarrassing loss to Stanford. I'm Brother J Triple Dub with my man Rich the Brick. Good day, sports drinkers. If you're new to the show, please subscribe. Came back and played a heck of a game, heck of a game in the second quarter. And went on to get the victory. I'm truly upset. I'm truly uh, disturbed. Yeah, you and me I both, Coach. Stay composed. Yep. Do the best. You can tell in his voice that he's a bit I mean, shell shocked right now. Press conference because you deserve my best, and I'm gonna try my best to give it to you. Uh, started out the game. Wonderfully, finally put it together in the first half like I desired, like we desired, like our players desired, and the fans. A wonderful first half. Uh, 29 nothing, I believe the score was. Am I correct? 29 to zilch. Render. Nothing, zero. How do you lose a game like that? Close to it, which I can't fathom right now. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. And then the That's the textbook kept, definition kept of a choke. Uh, it was the biggest comeback in Stanford's at, history. At, at, at halftime, I. I Talk to him about, you know, the old cliche people say it's zero, 0 but that's not true. It's not zero, 0 it's 29 nothing. But I felt complacency going into the half because uh, we stalled offensively. We gave up some. Man, this is weak. Listen up, sports just drinkers. Y'all like, need to hear this I depressing interview without us interrupting. Time. We coming back at the end with the rest of our reaction. I got plenty more to say. I Trust and believe. You can't stand it. You can't understand. Yep, I'm just getting started. That happens to us, but it did, and uh, didn't turn it back on. I think until late in the fourth quarter, when we were able to go down and, and get a score, and we could go down and then they tied up, and we got overtime. And you don't want to go in overtime because they, they have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. I was surprised that they kicked the field goal the first time. I thought they were just going to go for two and try their best to get it over with. But they were resilient. Big win by them. Uh, horrible loss by us. Let's go. Hey, Coach. Brian Howe from the Daily Camera. Um, obviously, that second half, you know, it was the connection from the quarterback to 13 was, was killing you guys. And Travis was on him quite a bit. What were you seeing in that matchup between Travis and Well, we didn't play well, not just Travis. We, we I, I think it all started when we gave up on the 97-yard touchdown, which was flat out ridiculous. That's when it all started. That's when all the foolishness, all the complacency, all the mess started. I mean, we... How in the world we give up? Uh, Jesus. Uh, our secondary did not play the best game, especially at the cornerback position. Coach Matt Smith, 104.3 The Fan. Yes, it seemed sir. like in the second half, maybe just some communication issues there with the coaching staff. Did you feel that? In, in what regard? Substitution errors. Substitution on like. defense? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, there's so many different packages that you run and so many different personnel, but you got to understand we're basing our change of personnel on what they're changing. So that kind of happens when they have in different personnel groups and the, the, the referee is, is holding the game up. So we get a chance to substitute as well. What was happening is, is one guy was coming off the field appropriately and he saw something and he stopped. So that gives us 12 men on the field. It was things like that that was transpiring, which I, we can't even wrap our head around it because we practice this stuff repeatedly. Again, along the same line, some of the, the substitution things, the penalties, you've defended Coach Kelly at every turn. Yeah. This is one where now people are going to start pointing fingers. and he's a, you know, Well, if you're going to point the fingers, point it at me because if I'm allowing it, it, it should be on me, not him. Point it on me. Uh, we go over this stuff. We go over this stuff. And <laughs> there are times where you know what group is in, you know what group you're on, but you, you, you have a, a lapse of, of understanding in those crucial moments. Uh, right now, we're not built for the moment. We're not built for the moment. Uh, some of our players aren't built for the moment where they have to make a play or they have to keep contained or they have to make a block or they have to get a, uh, another yard. We're not built for the moment right now. King with the Denver Gazette. Yes, sir. Um, you guys had 17 penalties tonight. That, I mean, that was something that was a positive for you guys early in the season was wow. a lack of penalties. Um, I didn't know it was that many. What has led to the, the, the amount of penalties you guys have been accumulating over the last um, couple weeks? Not being smart. Not being disciplined. Not understanding the moment. That's, that's what 
that is. Yeah, that's what that is. My coach, Adam Mr. Tiger, 24-7 Sports. We saw Trevor Woods play a little closer to the line of scrimmage at yeah. linebacker tonight. Yeah. Is that a matchup with Stanford, or do you like him in that role? No, I love him in that role. I, I really do. Um, we have some good safeties that, that that we have, and Trevor is that kind of team guy that's going to do whatever he needs to do to help his team. And that's something that he's – I'll do that. And I think he played well. I haven't watched the film yet, but thank God that uh, he's willing to sacrifice what he's accustomed to doing to help us improve ourselves. Hey, Coach, Jake Schwannis, DMVR. How just curious doing? about Travis, just his conditioning, what you felt like that his was. His condition is great. <coughs> it was just some plays he made, some plays he didn't. Just so happens the plays that he didn't make at the end are magnified. But the plays he made kept us in the game. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Uh, Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. I remember you said before that Shore puts on his cape and saves his games. For right. Now. What kind of happened in overtime where maybe there was miscommunication on that play when it turned into an interception? Yeah, first of all, he should have never thrown the ball. He should have never thrown the ball. Um... <laughs> I don't know if they played on a replay to show what happened with the receivers on that play. Did they show it? Yeah, what happened? Because I want to see it because I know what happened. I want to see what they showed. Yeah, I think something else something else transpired on that play that, that, that shouldn't happen. So he shouldn't have never thrown the ball, though. Just give us another down, let's kick the field goal. Stay in it. Hey, Coach. Yes, sir. Casolo, uh, Buffalo's Wire. Um, kickoffs have been an issue for your team this year. I think it's a handful of times you've kicked it out of bounds, especially I think it's twice after a uh, personal foul penalty. Yeah. Can you say what the issue is or what the – I don't think we had that problem today. There? I mean, the, the, the kickoff that we did have that went out of bounds, it was going to be marked at the 20 regardless. So it was a moot point. Other than that, I think the, uh, uh, Jace did a great job on kickoffs today. Kickoffs today. We improved in that area today. Hey, Coach Pat Rooney, Full the Daily Camera. Yes, sir. When you had overtime against Colorado State, you took the ball first when the offense had a lot of momentum. Yeah. Uh, why the decision tonight to, to get the offense out there? Um, we, we have a really good quarterback, and I trust him. That, that's why. And we went right down the score. mentioned the, the complacency with this team. You guys now have two weeks before you play again. Right. Is this a good time for a bye week to, you know, try to fix something? No, it's situation? not a good time for a bye week. It's just, just, I mean, if you're having problems where you're injured and you have a, quite a few injuries, it's a good time for a bye week. But when you're playing like you're playing, you don't want a bye week. You want to you work it out. You want to make it happen. Um, I, I, I wish we could play again next week. I really do. You talked about the complacency of the defense. The complacency of everybody. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to talk about the offense a little bit. I mean, giving up that amount of points in the second half is obviously unacceptable, yes, but yes. the offense obviously also has to contribute in some way. Yeah, true. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, you're right. I don't need to talk about it. You said it. Coach, one personnel thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Juwan Mitchell, we didn't, I didn't see him in offense at all. Yeah. Is he with this team still? Yeah. Is he injured? Ask him what, what, what happened. Next guy. Just simply put, I mean, how does this team go forward after a, after a defeat? You have no choice but to go forward. That's life. This ain't the only thing that's going on in life. I mean, all you guys are dealing with something. You're still moving. You're still progressing. You're still going forward. We got to do the same darn thing. We didn't expect that. There's a lot of things that goes on in life that's unexpected, and this is one of them. We got to knuckle up and let's go. We can't sit down and have no pity party. Y'all don't feel bad for us. Some of y'all are ecstatic about what transpired today, and I know that. But that's cool. We're going to take this one on the chin because we deserve it. Um, 29, I, I, I've never been in one of these types. I, I don't remember, a t I, from, from youth on, I don't remember being up 29 nothing and losing a football game. I really don't. This is, this is a little tough for me. And I'm trying my best. And I thank you all for your patience. And I thank you for your, your heart because this is really tough for me. But you can see when I'm amping up and I kind of see this stuff coming, you can see why I go at it like I go at it because I could feel my team. I could feel what's about to transpire, and here we go. I mean, 
how do you guys, how important are the next maybe 24 Every game is important. The 20, next 24 to 48 hours in terms of flushing this and moving past this. Well, you got to make, they got to, they, they got to, what I just said in the locker room to the team is they got to make up in their mind, are they in love with this game or are they in like with it? Because when you love something, you give to it unconditionally. You give everything you got to it, but when you like it, that's just the button you push. And it lights up in a like. That's what they do on social media. So we got to figure out, do they love it or do they like it? And it's hard for me because I, I, I love this. I, I, I love it. I, I'm, without a shadow of a doubt, I am truly 100% in love with this thing. And I just want people to match me. Just match my passion, match my match my heart, match my love, match my consistency, just match my mannerism, just match every darn thing I give to this game. I love this. I, sadly, I love it so much, but the game don't even occupy the ability to love you back. That's a strange love, isn't it? Coach, you spoke uh, Patrick Dawson, Scope Up Sports. Uh, you spoke about struggles in the secondary. What are some things that you and the coaching staff are going to look at throughout the bye week? Well, you, you can always look at personnel, but it is what it is. It is what it is. So it was hard to look at. You Defensive backs either play to make a play or play to, 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 to stop a play from being made. I like the guys who play to make a play. I really do. We got to get to that point. Okay, stop the vid. Sorry, y'all. Y'all can watch the whole presser online, but I gotta get some stuff off my chest, cool? One sec. Let me jump in quickly before you get on a roll, mate. Yeah, go ahead. I thought Coach Prime was a leader, a motivator. Now he's blaming the team for being too complacent. Something is off here. But Britt, you right. A whole lot is off. Yeah, he can lead, but they just fell apart for a variety of reasons. Where do I start? Where do I start? This was a horrible display of coaching and team effort. I love Prime. He balled out for my Cowboys, but something gotta give. Honestly, Coach Prime been outcoached, outstaffed, and outplayed all season. If it wasn't for a few miracle plays, they would be winless. Excellent point, brother. But we see this all the time. Oftentimes, great players aren't great coaches. How you gonna play Travis Hunter so much? I get it. He your best player. You play him on both sides of the ball. But bruh... The young man just coming back from an injury? A lacerated liver. Yeah, yeah, a liver laceration and you play him over 100 snaps? 88 snaps on defense and 69 on offense. That's what? 157 snaps. Wow, that's overkill. And another thing, these stupid penalties gotta stop. 17 penalties. You can't spot a team 127 yards, Rich. That's ridiculous, Rich. No discipline, but that's been a theme for this team. Yes, but you know, what really caught my attention in this press conference was Sanders saying the team isn't built for the big moments. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't belittle reporters for not believing in your team. You can't hype up your guys on television and social media and then, and then, when it all collapses, say the team can't handle it. He basically set them up for this. They ain't ready, coach. Gotta remember... This program was a bottom feeder last year. Now suddenly, they got rappers and Hollywood actors coming to games like it's some kind of show. This ain't no Hollywood show, Lord, man. Well, I can tell you this. Head's gonna roll soon. But with the right staff and front office, Coach Prime can excel. I truly believe that.